Howdy there YouTube, this is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and today is Mac Madness Monday. I'm actually in the process of getting my new MacBook Pro 15 inch i7 2.2 gigahertz. Um, I'm very excited for it, as you can tell, it comes tomorrow. And I have a little bit of a weird issue with my Mac Mini. I'm wiping it because I'm giving it to my dad. Long story short, I don't have all of my stuff and all my applications on board, so I don't really have the capability of doing a screen flow today. So I decided I'd use the very excellent handy dandy utility named Skype. And I have uh, three other people here on the panel with me. And what we are going to do is talk about... Uh, the loveliest Mac apps money can buy or sometimes can't buy because there are some free ones. So listen up. It's going to be a great ride. We each have three apps each and there's four of us. So we're going to go through quickly and kind of tell you what they're about and for what user it would be applicable. So I'll, I'm dying here. I'll kick it off. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Notational Velocity. This application is free. It's available from Notational.net. It's not available on the Mac App Store, unfortunately. But it is one of the most cool and most powerful uh, note-taking utilities there are out there. Now, I'm careful to say powerful because there actually aren't a lot of options. It's basically just taking notes. The beauty of it, it has super, super powerful search. So you can go and archive your notes three years back and you search a single keyword and it pops up instantaneously. The app launches extremely fast. It's super quick. It's excellent for taking notes. I've been using it for class. I moved away from Microsoft Word, text edit, all that other stuff. That's the other great thing about this over text edit is you don't have a bunch of different weird stray files hanging around your desktop. It's all consolidated in the notational velocity bin. Uh, additionally, you can do special backups and archive it. So if you were to experience data loss, uh, all your notes wouldn't be gone. It's one of the most fantastic apps out there and I use it more than probably anything else. Again, it's free from notational.net and uh, it's most, most, most highly recommended from that snazzy iPhone guy. So excellent. And then uh, Andrew, uh, why don't you kick it off and tell us your first application? Okay, the first app I'll be going over is an app called Caffeine. Now, I know we've all just sat and wanted to watch a movie on our Mac before, and sadly, your screen does go dark, go to sleep after a while when you don't move your mouse, and that can be a pain having to move your mouse now and then. And Caffeine is very simple. It runs in the background, takes up almost no CPU, and it has a little icon in the menu bar at the very top. All you have to do is click on it, and it will fill it uh, its little cup, and it won't go to sleep as long as it's selected. You can unselect it at any time when you're done watching your movie or whatever you want to do. And so it's very easy um, so that you don't have to keep worrying about moving your mouse now and then. And it is free from the Mac App Store. Perfect. Uh, sorry, a little bit of delay there. John, why don't you kick it off with your first application? All right, so I'm going to talk about Stock Market I 2.6 really quickly. It's an innovative interface that makes it easy to track investment portfolios because I actually take stock in school, and it's something really cool that I think anybody who actually invests in stock could really use because it's all in one easy interface, and you can buy stock, track stock, and everything there right on your desktop. So it's also free off Apple's website, so that's also a plus, and it's something really cool I should talk about. I thought I should talk about. Absolutely. Very awesome. Ted, why don't you kick it off with your first application? All right. Well, my first favorite is called the Aperture. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already um, <clears throat> probably heard of this application. And uh, it is in the Mac App Store. It is $79.99. Uh, it is a bit expensive, but it is a photo editing uh, application in the Mac App Store. It's very professional. And uh, overall, I think it's really cool. So that is Aperture. Fantastic. I'm going to kick it off with the second round. We're going like light speed, guys. Um, I'm going to do uh, Capture One Pro 6. Now, this is one of the most, in my opinion, one of the most powerful photo editing applications out there. It's available for $399 from phrase1.com. So it's not the cheapest application out there but I think it's super powerful. And it actually harmonizes very well with uh, Photoshop as well as Aperture. Aperture is kind of the organization aspect of it. And although you can do some editing and cropping and alignment and filters, there's not a ton of stuff. Whereas with, um, for example, 
Capture One, it's uh, you can still organize stuff, but it's not the best kind of library. Essentially, what it allows you to do is it takes the reins of a, a quote unquote easy Photoshop. I use Photoshop to remove blemishes, a bunch of other stuff that you have to do really finite editing. But for filters and for effects, uh, Capture One has some of the most beautiful filters, some of the most powerful filters. You can modify them to the very, very slightest degree. And I think it's a very, very cool application that I've used extensively, even though I'm kind of an amateur photographer. Photographer. Uh, it was definitely one of the best applications I bought. The filters are beautiful and I've really, really enjoyed using it. So that is Capture One Pro 6, available for $399 from phase1.com. Andrew, why don't you go ahead with your second application? Sure. My second application is called FaceTab, and it is generally a very simple way that allow you to access your Facebook feed, your profile, your friends, and your messages. It's very similar to the mobile version of the Facebook app, and it runs in the background. It has a icon in your menu bar, and at any time, you can just click that, and it'll bring up a pop-up, basically, and you can access your home profile, friends, and messages. It doesn't give you all of the features that you would have with the Facebook website, like chat, but it d does provide the main things that you would look for when using Facebook. So if you just want to check your newsfeed for a second, it's extremely simple. Instead of having to log in every time, just click a button in your menu bar, and it'll take you there. It's free, and it is from the Mac App Store. That's cool. I actually think I've seen it, but I haven't downloaded it. I'll have to now. It looks pretty neat. John, second app? Yeah, I'm going to talk about Sketchbox 1.4. It is free off Apple's website again. And basically what you do is you enter text or make drawings and set individual reminders for each sticky to use them as a visual alarm clock. So if you need something to do, you basically set the time and your desktop will notify you with that sticky note basically saying you need to do that uh, certain thing. It's great for organization. And basically each sticky consists of three layers, the drawing canvas, a little text editor, and innovative alarm timer. It combines the best of analog and digital clocks, so basically you've got a nice little clock on your um, sticky note, and it's really great for uh, organization and something if you're in school and you need to do homework at a certain time or things like that. So that's Sketchbox 1.4, free off Apple's website. Oh, that's cool. Okay, Ted, second application. Okay, the application I'm going to be discussing is called Monster Ate My Homework. Uh, now, this is a really cool and kind of a quirky application. Uh, it is free in the Mac App Store. I love this uh, and it's pretty much where you just fling these balls at these monsters uh, that I guess are trying to get in the way of your homework. And you have to make sure that your homework does not fall off the building or whatever uh, that it's on. Uh, it's pretty fun. I've enjoyed playing it, and especially for being free, I recommend downloading it, and uh, it's just a really cool game. Sweet, and I'll kick it off with the third and final round. Uh, mine is going to be Alfred, and I'm actually going to be doing its own separate entity or its own Mac Madness Monday on this because it really is one of the most powerful launching utilities out there. There's, of course, the application. Um, I mean, there's several launchers out there. I've even reviewed some. But uh, one of the most popular ones to this point was Quicksilver. Quicksilver has kind of died off the vine. And Alfred has kind of picked up the reins. And I think it's one of the most beautiful launchers out there. Not only does it allow you quick shortcuts to your favorite websites and be able to search from basically anywhere on your computer, but it also allows application launching, uh, direct Twitter feed tweets. And if you buy the Alfred Power Pack, which is an additional $15, you can get a terminal shell from within your uh with within your um launcher window and there's just a bunch of really crazy stuff that I mean, I couldn't even fathom of covering, and I don't even use most of it because there seriously is so much stuff you honestly have to pick and choose uh, what exactly you want to use. But the Alfred application by itself is available for free on the Mac App Store, and if you want the Power Pack, which brings some honestly some really stellar features like theme modification and stuff like that. Uh, that is $15 from alfredapp.com. So, uh, Andrew, why don't you kick it off with your last app? Sure. Um, my last app is called I Procrastinate, and it's a really good organizer um, or organization program. It's perfect for whether you're homeschooled or you're like a graphic designer. And what it basically lets you do is it lets you add different subjects, add different uh, different things that you need to accomplish within the day, and gives you many tools, like whether you need to set a specific time. And then it will give you a notification when that time comes, okay, this is what you need to do. You can also add 
files that are on your hard drive to the specific task. So let's that, say that you're a graphic designer and you want to complete a, a project for one of your clients. You can say, okay, this is what I need to do. Here are the different files that they gave me that I want to put into the final project and I want it done by this time. It'll notify you and it'll give you those files right there. So it's very simple and it is also free from the Mac App Store. Oh, that's cool. That also forces you to meet deadlines, which I guess for me is not too good, but no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> cool application. <laughs> uh, so, John, why don't you uh, tell us your second, oh, I guess it would be your third app, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's my third. All right, so the uh, last app I want to talk about is called Disk Inventory X. Again, it is free. And basically what it does, it's a disk usage utility for Mac OS X. It basically shows the sizes of files and folders in a special graphical way called tree maps. And it does really take a while to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, you can really just open it up and right away you know how much usage this certain disk in your optical drive is taking up or any other disks installed on your hard drive. And it's really cool. I like to use it a lot. Uh, just to see how much CPU I'm really sucking up and really if I could cut down. So that's Disk Inventory X, and it's not available on the App Store. You can download it off their website for free. Very cool. Actually, I have to probably check that one out. Ted, what is your third and final application for not just yourself, but everyone in this panel? <laughs> yeah, well, my third application is Echo Fun. Uh, now, this is a Twitter application, and it's actually pretty nice. One thing I like about it is the UI. Uh, the UI, in my opinion, is a little bit better, actually, than the default Twitter for Mac uh, application. I really like it a lot. Uh, you can actually customize your notifications. You could have either a growl notification or a status bar notification or a badge on the application. So it's really cool. Uh, it's really versatile. I like it a lot, and I've been using it for a while. So that is Echophone. Very cool. I was a big Echo fan for a long time. I'm currently using the current Twitter application, which I really have become to hate. So I actually should probably move away from it. I'm looking at an application called Habari for Twitter. It looks super clean, super cool. The only problem is it's a whopping $13.99. So I am in cahoots with the developer, and hopefully we can get a promo code for that. But geez, that is definitely one of the better applications out there, considering Twitter is not so fantastic. So there you go. Uh, thank you so much to everyone for being on the panel. Uh, we'll go around one more time. Just tell us where we can find your stuff. Andrew, where can we find your YouTube channel, your Twitter feed, all that good stuff? Um, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash appgeekreviews, and you can follow me on Twitter at geekandrew. Perfect. John? Uh, you can find me at youtube.com slash gadgetgiant, and the same on Twitter at gadgetgiant. Ted? And uh, you can find me at youtube.com slash Ted's Tech Talk. You guys probably heard me on the uh, d discussion panel last week as well. But it is youtube.com slash Ted's Tech Talk and twitter.com slash Ted's Tech Talk. And I'm Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks. Boom. That's it. Nice. Yeah. That worked out good. <laughs> Nicely good. played, guys. That was actually.